Phil, and today I'm going to look at the um, Seed Studio Grove I2C FM receiver. And it's something you put together yourself rather than just buy a um, FM radio receiver. So let's have a quick look at FM, uh, what it is, uh, when it started, and uh, what you can do in a project. So um, the overall device is the one on top. And near the top right, there's a connection for uh, earphones, uh, even an external uh, amplifier and speaker. And it's a, a Grove component, and that means it, it um, has a connection to other Grove uh, components like computers using a Grove cable. And the socket for that is on the uh, left. That's the white socket on the left. And you can see how it's been used in this project. We've got a, an Arduino computer uh, with um, a Grove shield on top. And it's connected um, to uh, two, three, four, four um, Grove devices, one of those being the um, FM receiver. So frequency modulation... Um, started in Australia uh, in 1948, which is um, very early, but um, it wasn't introduced um, commercially until the uh, 1980s with um, a, radio station, a community radio station and the national broadcaster starting a little bit earlier uh, in December 1974. So we're now celebrating 50 years of um, constant availability of FM broadcasting in Australia. So if we look at it, um, there's the frequency uh, range and bandwidth, and we can have subcarriers. And uh, we'll also have a look at one of those subcarriers that can transmit data. So well, uh, the Australian government regulates the frequencies that are allocated and the bandwidth uh, for FM radio. So uh, we'll be looking also at um, the radio data system where you can transmit a small amount of data um, with a, um, a 1.2 kilobit rate uh, on a subcarrier uh, of the FM allocated bandwidth. In America, there's a slight variation, almost the same system, but instead of um, RDS, it's uh, RBDS. And the sort of things that you can do on that the, can support some messages. Probably the most important is the uh, emergency message, which is uh, code 31. And RDS actually started off in Germany as a support for traffic um, on the road network so that you could broadcast messages without um, uh, disturbing other FM listeners. So the cost of the um, chip itself, let's have a look at that. The cost are around about $8.80. I've had it for about nearly um, six years now. And um, what I, you can do with it is build your own radio receiver. So the one we're looking at has a Grove interface. It has a um, supports more than the uh, Australian allocated FM range. It's uh, low cons power consumption and supports a headset only. And we'll explore that uh, in our project a little bit uh, later. And um, it works with the voltage system from 3.3 to 5 volts. So this is what the chip, it's all about using a chip to do most of the work. And the chip that I'll be using in the Grove system is the RDA 5807M. So you can see the details of that here. And uh, we might actually go across to the projects that I've been working on. So um, we'll do um, the first demonstration here. We'll look at it on my desktop. I've got the, uh, everything mounted on Lego. So I'm using a small Arduino compatible computer. Um, 
and it's actually uh, compatible with the Arduino Nano. And it, everything, all of the electronics here, except for the speaker, comes from Seed Studio. So we might look at those in detail. Here we've got the push buttons for um, scanning up and down uh, the radio spectrum. And we've got a uh, volume control. And you can see the Sedino. And everything's got cables connecting the peripherals to the um, nano computer. So um, the objective here is really just to get the demo to work and perhaps explore some potential of um, how you could use this project. So um, the way that it's connected together, uh, besides the nano, I've also got it connected to a um, Lotus uh, computer, which is also uh, compatible with the um, Arduino Uno standard. So uh, we might go across and have a look at the software now. There's the connections and the components. We'll go across and, and have a look at the software. So let's have a look at the hardware construction. I'm starting off with a um, computer called the Cedino Lotus, and it's version 1.1. So it's um, similar to the Arduino Uno uh, with a Grove shield, but this contains both of those together. So you've got access on top here to uh, Grove sockets, and uh, I'm going to start populating those now. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is um, add my computer. And for the second um, software program and project, I'm going to um, uh, control everything with a serial monitor. Uh, and uh, th this is a good start before I look at um, additional user interfaces. So um, the first thing is to connect the Grove I to c FM receiver, and it's connected to the I2C port on the um, Lotus computer. Then I'm going to add a few more peripherals. Here we've got the um, rotary angle for the volume control and the dual button uh, goes on to ports two and three for scanning up and down. And I really need um, to listen to it uh, more than just using earphones and the um, output from the um, uh, FM receiver, the audio output is far too low, even for headphones. So you need a headphone amplifier. And here I've got a headphone amplifier plus the donor speaker, uh, so I can hear the F FM broadcasts. And that's the hardware construction. So now I've got the software that um, is on the uh, Seed Studio uh, wiki website and um, I'm I haven't modified this at all but um, it's a good start to be able to go through and understand the code uh, before you modify it so there's a lot you can actually do on it and there's um, a couple of other uh, public domain um, applications that you can have a look at so when we go through it, you can see um, the libraries that I'm using. Nothing special there. I'm storing some of the uh, properties in the EEPROM area. Uh, so um, I uh, need to relook this when I'm looking at the uh, other computers because they might be using a different routine for storing data in the EEPROM. So um, you can see the variables. I've got the button up, down, and the volume control. They're the only three peripherals, one digital, or two digital, and uh, one analog. You can see the uh, uh, setting up all the variables. Uh, we're not actually looking at RDS in this case. Um, and in the setup, we're um, uh, using a chip slightly different from the one that's used in the hardware. So I, I presume all the registers are uh, similar. I haven't looked at that in detail. And what we're doing here is uh, in the main loop, we're setting up a uh, an interval for polling. And um, 
if we um, uh, change the uh, signal strength, we do some further analysis. So here we're looking at the uh, if the button is up or down, and if it is, we uh, then go off and um, seek FM. So this is supported by a library uh, for the uh, FM receiver. And um, so we've got seek up and seek down and the volume control. So you can see most of the routines are in this um, continuous loop here. And um, the other, I've added um, a couple of slight changes. One is I've added the uh, volume change, the notification for that. And the rest of the routines, except for one right at the end, uh, we might have a look at that one. So uh, we'll move right down. And um, let's see. I haven't actually got it on this one, but on the uh, next program, I've got a uh, stop. And uh, all of these um, are part of the library routines for the software. So that's a description of the hardware and the software. And to operate it, you just simply press the buttons one and two uh, for scanning uh, to change the uh, radio stations. And you use the um, angular or the rotary angle sensor to change the volume. The result? Well, I was able to um, uh, print out uh, a debug report onto the Arduino serial monitor, and it shows you where it's starting the scan uh, and finding the uh, radio station, giving you the signal strength, and it will stop when it finds a um, FM radio station. Okay, so um, I was only able to pick up a couple of stations, and I think it's because I've got um, a lot of radio interference uh, where I am. And also, um, it really does need a better uh, radio antenna. The audio output is very low, and um, it won't even go onto the donor uh, external amplifier and speaker uh, without a preamplifier. So uh, that's a bit of an issue. And I've noticed on the um, Grove radio sensors or the uh, audio devices like the uh, MP3 player, they've added a uh, an amplifier so you get a much better audio signal. So um, some of the um, extensions are to do other projects. And I've done one other one. And the second demo uses a... Um, uh, a total interface with the serial port. So some of the challenges are to um, decode the RDS information um, and also um, improve the user interface for uh, particular people, people who are blind. Instead of using the uh, scan buttons, uh, you could um, add a, um, a simple... Um, hand waving or touch device to uh, control the radio. And that could also help people uh, with dementia. So let's have a look at some of the um, uh, references. So you can get the device from uh, the shop at uh, Seed Studio. There's a, a, a bit of support there and access to um, other projects that you can work on. Good idea to get to know the technical details of your local radio station and also a little bit about RDS if you're going to decode that. It's also interesting to see uh, what the history of FM is uh, in your local region and for working out the technology behind FM and comparing that to uh, AM. And perhaps considering what the uh, future is of FM. Like Norway, Australia might eventually um, uh, get rid of FM and uh, just rely totally on DAB plus for radio broadcasting. So instead of doing the um, uh, this as a do-it-yourself project, there is a kit available from um, Australian Geographic and also there's a uh, another kit available uh, on FM 
but both of these ones are more hardware related. And uh, that's it on this project from me. So uh, stay tuned and I'll give you a, a desktop demonstration. This is the uh, FM radio demonstration. And I'm using a um, special Grove FM receiver, uh, which is uh, this chip here. And while it has an output to a speaker, it also has an input uh, over a Grove cable uh, with a uh, I to C interface to a um, Sedino nano computer, which is Arduino Uno compatible. And we have two other Grove ports. One's analog, and that goes to a potentiometer for volume control. And the other one's a digital, going to a dual uh, push button or a dual button. And uh, that allows to either scan up in the FM frequency range or scan down. And that's the uh, FM demo uh, using the um, Grove I to C FM receiver. And now we'll demonstrate the uh, FM radio in operation. So we'll just turn on the speaker on the back here. And uh, we'll go up and down in scanning. So we're scanning at the moment. We've just found an FM station. And there's um, a lot more can be done to uh, provide better feedback, uh, particularly showing the uh, station ID on a um, display. We might go the other way now. That's the FM radio.